Okay, so West Side Story. This was a movie I actually have a personal connection to because I saw it when I was in sixth grade at a sport sailing camp. It's a day camp uh, on the water in Port Washington. And I would ride my bike there every day. And when it would rain, um, we'd basically go out in the water all day for hours and hours. But when it would rain, we would rig up. They'd pull us back in. Sometimes we wouldn't even rig the boat up. We'd just head right back in. And we'd go to this little small hut. That's where we... It's not even a hut. It's like a small one building with a one small room in the back and a little office in the front with a computer and then in the back room there's a desk about like 10 folding chairs one rolling chair where the counselor would sit and a very small tv on the top of a large white cabinet a very small old like panasonic zenith tv like probably about the size of like this like my head it was so small um and we had a bunch of VHSs to choose from. There was Austin Powers. There was The Matrix. We watched The Matrix. Um, that is another, another review, but that's a memory. I first watched The Matrix on that shitty TV. And then we also watched West Side Story uh, on VHS. I remember even thinking it came out like 1998 due to the VHS year. Like what it came up, the copyright. I said copyright 1998, I guess when they printed it or whatever. But no, this was the 1961 original Broadway musical and I had no idea I'd never heard of it I, my dad brought home a book actually about it so that's all I had to reference it it was a book on the making of the musical like called what's the song um something good something's coming something good yeah that was the title of the book and I just remember how and it said West Side Story and I had the reference but never died, had I seen it so I watched the first 40 minutes that's it and then I go to my grandma's house next couple weeks and I really like the music I really like the song um something's coming sung by Richard Baymeer who I would love later like the next year when I watched Twin Peaks and I had no idea that 30 years later he'd be Ben Horn and he was middle-aged Ben Horn in Twin Peaks and then he returns in Twin Peaks the return as Ben Horn he's an old man and he's crotchety there with uh, Jerry his brother who's on all sorts of weed it's ridiculous the Twin Peaks. Excellent. But, no, West Side Story, Richard Baymere. It's funny because his name, Richard, isn't even on here. It's just Natalie Wood. And she's so marketable, apparently. Natalie Wood is a terrific actress. She's terrific in this. I don't... Ex I really can't remember exactly what she was like in the movie. I just know she's terrific, and I remember she sings. I mean, she's great music in this. This movie is just fantastic. I, I got it for a dollar at my local library a while ago. Look at this... This is a recent print. I mean, look at that. They just fattened up the text. Um, this was directed by... It took me a while to find this for some reason. And Jerome Robbins, which I I remember reading that. Um, Robert E. Griffith wrote the stage play. And I did... I saw the stage play. I saw the play, actually, I'd say, the same year I watched this. I went, um, that, I went around Christmas. I was with my friend Russell. We were in his... I was playing Minecraft, talking about facts class, and talking about the girls in fact class. I specifically remember this was sixth grade, and um, my mom picked me up. We were just playing blowing up creepers on his TV that was all spackled with like blue light. It was there was something wrong with his television, but we picked me up, went to CW Post, watched the show, and it was one of those minimalist shows. You know, there's like no furniture, it's just people like kind of on a chair, and that's supposed to be a park, and it's so lame. Like you're like, how is this a park? They have like one bench it's stupid but it was like that they would go to the the store I, I forgot the name of the guy who ran the store but he was a big character and he would always say oh you kids are just getting in trouble because it was the jets and the sharks it's a modern day take on romeo and juliet i don't know if i'd mentioned that but that's just one of the most known things it's a very modern i mean it's just a modern take holy shit this won 10 academy awards that's insane I think Lord of the Rings won the most, right? Like 11? I mean, this is... Lord of the Rings is honestly a lot better than this. No offense. But for the time, this is a really good movie. And it's really fun. It, I love a lot of the music in it. I love Natalie Wood's music. I love Richard Baymere's music. And, um, yeah. I mean, what else is there to say? Uh, the play was good. Steven Spielberg is making a film adaptation. He's been filming it for a while in New York City. Not a while. I mean, that, that finished actually before the whole coronavirus. And it's funny because it's supposed to come out 
in December and there's never a trailer or anything released so we really will yet to see what it's going to look like there's just no there's nothing posted about it in advance so we'll find out anyway um, Rachel Zegler Ansel Elwood are in that Rachel Zegler I actually know not personally know her but through a mutual acquaintance um, she's a newcomer she's from New Jersey so we'll see how her career comes. It may be a huge career after this. Um, Ansel Elgort, we all know him. He's very legendary, and he's very—he's um, already a legend in his own in his own ranks. The Fault in Our Stars ranks, the Divergent ranks. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Um, very good movie, very powerful. My childhood memories because I just remember watching it a while ago and in sixth grade, and it's yeah one of the first musicals I saw. So, that's that. Um, very excited for the Spielberg film. Uh, although, buddy, do uh, Indiana Jones 5. Why'd you, so why'd you do this for that? I wish you did Indiana Jones 5. Anyway, stay safe. Um, be well, everyone.